everybody. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to talk about high performance caching with Rails today. Um, in this talk, high performance actually has two meanings. One is it's fast to run. Uh, obviously, caching is what we use to make things fast. Um, the other is that it's fast to develop. Uh, I assume all of you use Ruby, so you kind of understand why it's important to build things quickly. Uh, so real quick, I am Matt Duncan. That is a giant picture of me. Uh, I work on the Rails team at Yammer. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Let's, uh, let's talk caching. That's way more fun. Um, so we'll need it, right? Um, any decent-sized Rails application is going to need it. Uh, any decent-sized web application is probably going to need it. And you have a lot of options. Um, so let's kind of dig through, um, kind of going from the top down. Uh, so we'll start with page caching. Um, Page caching really isn't a very good option for most sites because they have private data. Um, not all sites, uh, but authentication isn't really possible. So we're going to ignore page caching. Um, action caching is slightly better because it lets us handle authentication. Um, but it has other problems. Um, one is that it doesn't handle perspective data very well. So perspective data is data that you can see that other, people's can't, other people can't see. Um, or you see a slightly different version. So say you're an administrator, you're going to see different data than just a regular user will see. Um, so it's possible with action caching, but it ends up being like the more perspective your pages are, uh, the more different pages you're going to have to cache. So basically, you're caching one page per user. Um, and that's not really ideal, because it takes up a lot of space. and it's still not super easy. Um, so the kind of go-to solution usually is fragma caching. Um, it solves a lot of the perspective data problems, but there's still some. Um, you can kind of scope things to smaller, uh, smaller chunks of your pages. Uh, the big problem with it is complexity. It's kind of a pain in the ass to build. Um, you have to kind of put all of these blocks all over your pages, and um, when you need to change things, then you have to go searching, and it's just messy and very error prone. So instead of talking about all of that, we're going to talk about record cache today. Um, so record cache does database query caching. Um, there are other similar libraries, uh, Cache Money, I'm sure you've probably heard of as well. Um, but the idea is that we want to cache at the lowest level we can inside of Rails, which is basically where we are firing queries off the database. Um, so it looks a little bit like this. Uh, this is kind of a sample, um, sample model. So it's just a simple user. Uh, hopefully you all recognize that. Um, but let's look at it one step at a time. Um, the, the first line there is record cache by ID. So that does exactly what you think it does, right? Uh, well, well named. Um, we are caching this model by ID, and we will just put it into cache. Um, we'll serialize it into memcache. Uh, so at the bottom here, I put up like kind of what the cache keys actually look like that get generated. Um, so in this case, this would be a cache key for user ID 1. And then we have 2 and 3 here also. Um, so two is the version of the model. Uh, so you can invalidate an entire model at once. And we'll get to that later. And three is the cache version of record cache. So if a breaking change happens to come out in record cache, we can invalidate all of our records also. It's not really ideal, but we have that ability. Um, so this is basically what happens. Uh, hopefully, everyone recognizes this as well. Uh, you just call find by ID with your ID, and it will attempt to get your cache record from memcache. If not, it'll grab it from the database and stuff it into memcache on the way. So your next find by ID on that same ID, assuming that nothing has been invalidated, will uh, hit cache. Uh, the, next, the next line from that is a little bit more interesting. So we're record caching ID by email. Um, again, it does exactly what it says it does, uh, but it's a little bit more interesting, because in this case, we're just caching the ID. Um, so again, this is kind of what the cache key looks like. It's very similar. Um, but the idea here is that we are, so a find by email will first get the cached ID for the email, and then it'll get the cache record by the ID. So two memcached hits, but the cool thing is that we 
we are not really storing a full record in memcache for this additional uh, index. So we can have a whole bunch of these indexes, and they end up being really small, because all we need to store is the ID or something unique about that, uh, about that record. Um, and it also supports scopes. So in this case, um, this is kind of a um, example that's somewhat specific to Yammer. Um, so users belong to networks. Um, so in this case, we are just scoping on active users because that's all we probably care about finding. Uh, so just calling uh, active record or active users by network ID will uh, give us exactly what we want. And the reason we have a name here is because normally record cache will infer what you want to call the uh, index based on your uh, by. But in this case, because of the scope, it can't just build a magical name for you. So we have to specify a name. So what's, what's the catch, right? Uh, that all sounded way too simple. Um, there are a few. So rendering, uh, we can't get around uh, the rendering um, helping that fragment caching does. Uh, we still have to render these objects after we've gotten them back from cache. Um, but that turns out to not be such a huge problem because we can save all of that time with uh, record cache. Um, in the cases where it does become a problem, we can handle those kind of one off and hopefully they'll be much fewer. Uh, the other issue is raw SQL. So if you're updating or deleting records uh, manually, you'll need to invalidate cache for them. Uh, record cache handles update all and delete all automatically, but if you're doing anything else, you'll need to, uh, you'll need to handle invalidation on your own. Same thing with migrations. Migrations are basically SQL updates, so same rules apply. Uh, the other is active record chaining. So chaining uh, is not quite supported. Uh, you can have one scope, um, but once you get past that, it's not really supported. So if anyone wants to uh, dig in, I would love to help with that. Um, but yeah, we, it's, it's not supported yet. It turns out to be such a huge problem because most of the time you're caching on things that you're probably not going to chain anyway. Um, so back to invalidation real quick. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like. It's actually really simple. You just call invalidate record cache on a individual record. Um, this is all handled automatically for you when you save records. So this is something you only have to worry about if you are manually updating things. Um, so in this case, you can just invalidate a single record. The other way you can do is invalidate an entire model. Um, so you can do it two ways. Uh, you can increment the cache version, or what we've done is basically just alias that as invalidate record cache on the, um, on the uh, class itself. So it basically just bumps that cache version. Um, so all of those keys now uh, are no longer going to be found because we're going to be using a cache version of one more, effectively. So how well does it work, right? Like That's mostly the important question. Um, the, the kind of non-benchmark uh, answer is that it works really well. Uh, we don't really think about it much at all. Um, it just kind of works, and we don't have to deal with it very much, other than adding new records and occasionally invalidating on migrations. Um, so that's good, right? Um, the, the more measurable thing is uh, the other side of performance, which is how fast does it make us? Um, so we have about a 98% cache hit rate at Yammer. Um, so basically 2% of our queries miss in cache, which is pretty freaking awesome. Um, and that's definitely not a very small sample size at all. So it works. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>